that, Jeff? That uh, John Hillerman is he a recurring character in the yes, series? Yes. Oh, really? Which what one? Is, what is it? Uh, I know for sure. Okay. All right. Okay. Well, Peter, once again, welcome Hi. to Texas. Welcome back to Texas, Thank I should you. say, because Thank you. uh, you've spent a great deal of your life bouncing in and out here. <laughs> My favorite state. Uh, next to home, of course, California. Well, it isn't home, California, you know. Uh, New York is where I came from originally. But um, I don't know. I, I, I feel like uh, Texas has been more hospitable to me than either L.A. or uh, New York. Let's talk about the long-awaited Texas bill, because you and I were talking about that, I know, two years ago, maybe longer. Yeah. And uh, so here it is now. It's. Uh, ready for people to view. And um, a lot of Texans, of course, know Larry McMurtry's book. So what would you say are the major differences between the movie and the book? Well, Larry wrote a 500-page book, and uh, over 500 pages, a lot of characters, covers a lot of time. And uh, we're stuck with making a, a single movie. You, you could have easily made a miniseries out of it because uh, there's plenty of material and all of it was good. I mean, Larry writes the best dialogue anybody in, in our generation and, um, and has this wonderful voice as a writer that just carries you along. He can go a thousand pages and you don't get bored. But in a movie, we're, as I say, we're stuck with a limited number of minutes, uh, somewhere between two and two and a half. And um, uh, so the big job was editing it down because there wasn't the all the scenes are good, you know. So, um, and by editing it down, we had to decide what exactly we're going to focus in on, what characters needed to be changed. Uh, by changed, I mean dropped. Or uh, occasionally we changed some names because uh, there were a lot of J's in it. <laughs> J and Jenny, Genevieve, Gen Jack, Jill. So uh, on the page, it doesn't matter, but on the screen, you hear it. And so, things like that. Uh, but the big thing was pruning it down so that it concentrated on one element mainly. And that was really what was the central theme in the book, or central thread in the book, which was the relationship between Duane, that's Jeff Bridges, and uh, his wife, Carla, played by uh, Annie Potts, and JC, his high school sweetheart, played by Sybil Shepherd, who's just come back to town after a, a tragic, uh, tragic experience, loss of a child. So. Those three characters are, are the, the kind of triangle there, unusual triangle, I think, um, dominate the picture more than they did the book. And um, then the s subsidiary characters are all very important. There's Cloris Leachman's character and uh, Timothy Bottoms' character, also very important. But they, they feed into the central story, and yet they're, they're very separate. It's hard to explain. Uh, until you see the picture, but uh, I'd say that, you know, there's about six or seven major roles. Is Larry McMurtry happy with the movie? Larry hasn't seen it that I know of. I don't, I don't believe he's seen it. He was waiting to see it in the theater. He hates screenings and, uh, and doesn't, you know, doesn't like the glare of the spotlight. So he stayed, as he said to me, about a million miles away from the movie. So <laughs> he's always been like that. So he'll see it, I'm sure, when it opens. Did he have any input into the movie? Oh, sure. Uh, I sent Larry uh, the first draft. I asked Larry to work on the script with me. He said he didn't have the time. So uh, he was too busy writing novels and working as the, um, the uh, president of Penn. And uh, so I said, well, let me, let me just, I'll do a first draft and I'll send it to you. And if you have the time, get read it and let me know what you think. So he did that. I sent him the first draft and he read it and he had his comments. He ma mainly said, you know, he thought I ought to add something that, that I'd taken out and maybe leave something out that I'd left in and a few things like that, all very helpful. And then I believe I sent him another draft too. There were two, he read two or three drafts and uh, had his comments. Sometimes I listened, sometimes I didn't. Uh, but it was all help, always helpful. Peter, what is your perception of a Texan? Well, I think a Texan is uh, a lot like other people, only more so. <laughs> uh, it's the first thing that comes to mind. I mean, I think that 
things are outsized in Texas, uh, as the state is the biggest state, and I think that corresponds to some of the people's actions and behaviors, um, schemes, plans, dreams. Uh, and I think, uh, but I, I have a tendency to think most people are all, you know, a lot alike. Uh, it's just that they talk differently, or they look differently, or they sometimes even behave differently. But deep down, there's certain human traits that are awfully similar. How much did the people of Archer City contribute? In other words, I'm sure they're in crowd seats and things like that, but would you go around observing certain people and then try to put that into the movie? Uh, well, certainly in the crowd scenes, and then of course the actors were, you know, very friendly with the with the townspeople. And I know Jeff picked up uh, a lot of things from a couple of the townspeople in terms of dress. One 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 of the uh, Rusty Lindemann, I think, uh, whose uh, son's house we used. He was around a lot. And, uh, came to Jeff's door, uh, and Jeff was worrying because he didn't know exactly how to what to wear for the part, and he was, I came to his trailer and asked him something, and he said, geez, he says, you know, I love what you're wearing, Jeff said. He says, you want my shirt? And uh, he said, you want my hat? And pretty soon, he, Jeff had taken everything, the hat, the shirt, the pants, <laughs> the, 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 the pen in his pocket, the paper, and, the, and that was how Dwayne's look was, was born, because Rusty knocked on the door. So there were things like that. I'm sure if you ask the other actors, they probably have things they could tell you that um, and then, of course, we you know looked at the way people dressed and so on and so forth. Peter, when you had all these people together for the last picture show, they were largely unknowns. And now I, I might add, excuse me, to that. Didn't leave that, that. A lot of the supporting parts, almost all the supporting parts, are played by Texans, because um, really only the, the the five or six or seven or eight leads the. Uh, are uh, from California, you know, from the movie business, but the, uh, virtually everybody else is from, from Texas. Some of them are actors and actresses, some of them just, you know, regular people. Uh, everybody auditioned, uh, wanted to be in the, whoever wanted to be in the picture got a shot. We cast all the supporting parts, in, either in Dallas, Houston, San Antonio, or Wichita Falls, or Archer City. And you had a lot of uh, Texans working in the crew, too, didn't oh, you? Oh, yeah, sure. Mm -hmm. What percentage would you say? Well, I think it was quite a bit more than half. Most of the crew was from Texas. We had just some key people from, from California. In the last picture show, you, had, you were working with actors who were largely unknown. And now some of... <coughs> excuse me. Start over. In the last picture show, you had actors who were largely unknown since then. Many of them have become big stars. Now, what was it like taking these people and working with them now, where you have to deal with their stardom? Well, it's funny, but that didn't really come up, except in getting everybody there. I mean, just simply finding the time, getting the schedules so that everybody could be there at the same time. That was difficult, because everybody was working. I mean, uh, Cloris was doing a series, Annie Potts uh, read for um, Jeff, Sybil, and me, and we all just looked at each other and said, well, that's, that's Carla. And then, then the problem started, because she was doing Designing, designing Women, uh, you know, every week. So I believe she made uh, 14 round trips from Hollywood to Dallas, 28 plane trips to do the thing. We'd have her, we'd have her for three days, they'd have her for four days. Sometimes we'd have her four days, they'd have her for three days. So it was really rough. Uh, but in Chloris, uh, doing the series, Billy McNamara was in the series, he had to fly from Hawaii. I think he flew 11 times from Hawaii. Um, of course, Jeff and Sybil were we had them for the whole picture. Um, so just arranging it, getting everybody in the same place, that was the hard part. There wasn't much temperament, I have to say. Everybody behaved wonderfully. Uh, everybody uh, you know, knew their words, everybody was there, uh, everybody worked hard, everybody was very professional. It was a joy. And, and everybody contributed enormously, not just to their own 
scenes, but to the whole picture. It was, it was wonderful. It was a really, a, I think, the most team kind of effort that I've ever been involved with. It was like we all made this picture. Everybody had a piece of it, and, uh, and everybody you know, had a piece of it emotionally and intellectually. And it was really a, a wonderful experience. Hard work, very tough picture for everybody. But it was uh, worth it. The, la the last picture show is coming out on video soon, isn't it? It's going to come out in theaters first. It's going to open in, uh, in uh, about two or three weeks after Texasville. It's going to open in selected markets, in like one theater in Dallas, one theater in New York, one theater in Los Angeles, about 10, 12 markets in a new version, which is six minutes longer than the original version. And I have to say that uh, uh, Columbia Pictures has been very helpful in, in helping to get us to the point where we can have the two pictures because Texasville was independently made and released through Columbia, but Last Picture Show was a Columbia film. And uh, Frank Price at Columbia has been very cooperative. And uh, Peter Guber, who's uh, chairman of the Columbia Group, uh, um, was involved in the original release of The Last Picture Show. He was a junior executive or vice president at Columbia. And now he's the, one of the chairmen. Uh, so it's all kind of strange how this whole family, this, this Texasville family, because as I have, I've neglected to say, but I think what the movie's about, the same thing that the novel's about, which is about when the chips are down, and when the money's going and uh, things are bleak, really there's nothing you have that's more important than your friends and your family. And uh, I think that's what the book is saying in its way, and I think the movie's saying that. Um, and by extension, strangely enough, the family that made the movie has brought, you know, it's kind of like circle, brought everybody into this circle. Um, because it's strange, even the Columbia executives are all family on this one. The six minutes now, what will that be? Well, Bobby, I, it's strange because people, you know, have been very complimentary about the last picture show over the years, but I always felt it wasn't quite right. <laughs> and I just felt there was some stuff we took out that should have been in, but I, I wasn't sure what. I just felt it wasn't quite right. And uh, for years I'd been saying I'd love to get back and look at all the stuff we took out and just go through it again and see. Uh, because, you see, the film was very unusual in its day. It came out in 71. We made it in the 70s. Pretty unusual picture. Uh, black and white, hadn't been used for six or seven years, and there was no names in it, and it was fairly uh, frank sexually and so on. Um, so when we were making the picture, a lot of us, I mean, the producers and I, we didn't really know what we had on our hands. I was just thinking be lucky if the picture made its money back, you know, cost a million dollars. I didn't expect anything much from it, except that it would you know, hopefully make its money. And the studio, I don't think, either at the time, had any idea what it would do. So everybody was very worried about it being, you know, not more than two hours. And we had a two hour and a half movie originally, which was too long. But I always felt there were a few minutes that probably we shouldn't have taken out. And even a year after it opened, I put a minute back, a scene with Eileen Brennan and, uh, and Timothy Bottoms. Early on in the picture, we put back because I felt it was important for the audience to know that they lived with their parents, and this was the only scene, the two boys lived with their parents, and this was the only scene where you found that out. And uh, anyway, went back into the vaults. They, Columbia brought the, all the old film from the vaults in Kansas City, sitting in a salt mine, and almost everything was there. 20 years ago, but some of the stuff was missing. There was one piece of negative missing uh, on Sybil without any, you know, one of the naked shots of Sybil. Uh, that was gone. Somebody has that in their private collection. But uh, other than that, everything was there. And um, I went through it all and just went through it and decided this, this felt this was needed or this was needed. And it ended up being six minutes. It wasn't any plan we're going to put six minutes. It just ended up being about six minutes. I think we had seven and a half and we took it down to six. Uh, there are, th it ranges from scenes that run 30 seconds to scenes that run a minute to one that runs for three minutes. So it's really only about five or six little scenes, little transitional scenes 
uh, in a few places that clarify exactly what's happening, that I think make it, a few people who've seen it agree, make it richer and uh, clearer uh, what, the what the character's motivations are, in particular uh, JCs, in particular civils. Now, interestingly, Larry McMurtry had always felt that we'd taken a little bit too much out, and he kept saying, you know, I love that scene, because we, we did a terrific scene, of, not a dialogue scene, but a scene that Larry and I thought up, it wasn't in the book, which was with the three of them, Jeff, Sybil, and um, Tim Bottoms were in the front of her uh, convertible after school. They jump into the convertible, they're driving away from school, and they just, uh, Jeff spontaneously does an imitation of the coach, kind of making fun of the coach, and uh, then Tim bursts into singing the school song, just out of nowhere, just for the fun of it. And then they all join, and they all sing the school song, the car goes away, and it's kind of touching scene, the three of them there. And, we, and Larry always said he thought it was the best scene in the picture, so we, we put that back in uh, for Larry. And for me, I always loved the scene, too. And then there's a very important scene that, uh, where Sybil um, is kind of uh, seduced, so to speak, on the pool table by Clue Gulliger. It's a rather an erotic scene, which we took out, thinking we didn't need it. But in, the, in context today, and in modern, more modern thinking, I, uh, the scene is rather revealing in terms of what it says about J.C.'s character and her persona and, and why she behaved the way she did. And uh, I think it helps the audience to understand her uh, better. It will then later come out on video? Yeah, it'll be out on video in this version and on video disc in a special collection. Uh, I believe um, early next year. Was everybody comfortable working on this? Civil comfortable coming back into the situation? Oh, I don't know about comfort. <laughs> That's another story. I don't think anybody was that comfortable. It was a difficult picture. It was not a comforting picture. Sybil was playing a character. But who, comfortable with one another. Oh, I think we were pretty comfortable, though I must say I think Sybil and I went through something of the same, not as extreme, but something of the same kind of um, pattern that the characters, the Duane and JC go through in the movie, you know, getting to know each other again after so many years. But we had not, we had not fallen out of touch. I mean, Sybil and I were in touch over the years, so we hadn't, hadn't made a picture in 15 years, I don't think, and, and lived together in 12 or something, but, but we uh, had remained good, good friends over the years. So that was different. Uh, from the picture, but we went through a kind of, you know, working together is different than when you're not living together than when you are, and I think we both uh, had to get used to that in some way. Well, Peter, I'm happy for you that Texasville finally has arrived, and I Me hope too. it does well for you. Thanks. And uh, we'll be eager to hear what the next project is from Peter Bogdanovich. Well, thanks. I'm, I'm, I'm shooting a picture as we speak. Uh, oh. I flew in from New York. Uh, for this premiere in Dallas, which uh, I insisted be in Dallas because uh, I felt we, you know, should have the first big public showing of the movie in Texas and in the biggest, largest town n near the small town where we work. Uh, but um, I'm shooting a picture with Richard Pryor and Gene Wilder called Another You, uh, a funny, very funny picture. Uh, not as slapstick as some of their other stuff, a kind of a more of a character thing, but uh, wonderful. They're both terrific. We've been shooting one week, so um, that's, that'll be the next picture. That'll be out next summer. Well, we'll look forward to that as well. Thanks, Bobby. Maybe we'll talk at that time. I'd love to. Love Thanks, to see Peter. you again. Thanks. Thank you. Okay. Now, With the picture <laughs> term, yeah. <laughs> you were a little polite there. I would have said, everybody get out of the shot. Um, you spoke to uh, to Gene, yeah. He's, his, how is that picture? I hear it's good. I haven't seen it. Uh, yeah, it's good enough. It's not terrific, but I liked it good enough. He's such a sweetheart. Oh, isn't he? He's been through such hell mm -hmm. with Gilda, that whole thing. Yeah. Just, did you read that book? Gilda's book? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Years, you know, or more. Always wanted to work together. I almost did Silver. I just like the two guys, and I like the you know, the black-white thing with them, it's just interesting. It, go, it transcends that, but it's part of it, too, and it's, it's interesting. It's interesting. Rich is wonderful. And they're both such good act picture show. Because mm -hmm. that, we were cutting that, and I was, we were just finishing that, and I was, start, I was doing What's Up Doc. <laughs> so, it's 
like a 20-year cycle has ended and another one's beginning. The ancients used to believe that cycles went in 19 years, 